Hi, can I get everyone's attention? Thank you so much for coming here tonight. If I could get everyone to take a seat. Anyone who's gonna be a speaker tonight, just please be very careful when you come up in front of here. Our stage, we didn't wanna make it too big. We wanted it to be this very intimate, um, very personal uh, conversation that we have with our audience tonight. So when you come up, any of the speakers, just be careful because the chairs are not too far from the edge of the stage and we don't want anyone falling off. <laughs> Part of, part of our uh, prevention today starts out with safety, so I thought I'd give you that little safety <laughs> awareness. My name is Dorothy Forba Hartley, and I am the executive director of Project Touch. I'm gonna be one of your moderators tonight. Um, I just wanted to acknowledge one person in the room who's so important to me and everything that I've been able to accomplish here with our teens and youth in this community through Project Touch since I started here when I moved to California. And that is one of our original founders of Project Touch, Mr. Earl Faze. As you can tell, I told him, you know, you're a very important man. Come and sit in the reserve seating. And he is so humble and so amazing. There was no um, question why he has been one of our former men of uh, the city of Hermosa Beach many decades ago. Um, his late wife, uh, Julie Dorfaze, was the founder and the original executive director of Project Touch. I never got to meet her. She passed away in 1996, but I feel her presence with me all the time, um, making sure that on a very, very string, uh, shoestring budget, Project Touch, somehow, we keep going. And we've been here for 43 years in the city of Hermosa Beach with nine different locations at our height. So I could keep going on and on and talking, especially this next person, who's the second most important person in this room tonight to me, <laughs> is our mayor, Carolyn Petty. I wanted to come, have her to come up. I am so honored that we have been able to accomplish some things in the last few years here in this city, and it is by no odd chance that it wasn't because of uh, Carolyn Petty. She's on her first term still here as a council person, and obviously she's our mayor, but she's been in her most speech for 25 years as a resident. Um, professionally, she works in finance and she's a data controller. However, just last weekend or the weekend before, I had her as the MC of another event, Pets in the Park. So this woman will do just about anything for this city. She hosted 250 dogs walking through the park and brought her own little love. But the true loves of her life, which I think why um, it was so easy for us to get her to be our first uh, speaker tonight, is because of her children. She has two daughters, 14 years old, who she actually drug her them to the Pets of the Park as well. Um, but that is the true love of her life, which is education. So with that small introduction of this amazing, powerful woman, I would like to introduce you to our mayor, Carolyn Petty. Thank you, Dorothy. I want to thank, uh, and this is a mouthful, Beach Cities Prevention Community Council for hosting this. Um, they're a unit of behavioral health uh, sciences, not sciences, <laughs> services, um, and also Dorothy for doing this. Uh, I know this takes Dorothy a tremendous amount of time. As Dorothy said, uh, I have children. I've lived in Hermosa Beach almost 25 years. My kids are attending high school in the fall and they have been in the Hermosa school system since 2007. And I feel that I have a personal connection to all the kids in the school because I've seen them since they were in kindergarten. And I have concerns for all of the kids in the school. And, and actually one of the reasons I decided to run for council is because I had seen over the years, I had not seen anybody serving who had kids in the school district. And I really sensed that disconnect. And that was really, that in pensions, was one of the primary reasons that I decided to run for council. Um, protecting kids is very important to me. And there is some recent discussions that we've had in council um, that address kids and, and things that we've done to protect kids. As an example, we passed a social host ordinance on Tuesday night. Um, so people know what that is. Okay. <laughs> really important, but actually more important than that is making sure we get the word out. Uh, and so that's something that's gonna be important. We're gonna have a press release and make sure we communicate to parents what this is all about, because if they don't know, then that's not a good thing. So parents need to start understanding that they actually do have liability 
for kids in their home that are underage that they're serving alcohol to. So that's one thing that we did. The other thing that we did a few months ago was passed a prohibition on the personal cultivation and distribution of marijuana in the city of Hermosa Beach. So basically, um, if somebody has a medical marijuana card, they can smoke marijuana. Uh, but what this did was prohibit the personal cultivation of marijuana in, in your backyard, okay? So people cannot do that. No, they can still, with their medical marijuana card, go out and buy marijuana outside of city limits, but they can't grow it. And then the other thing that's actually really important is prohibiting the distribution. Because what I've come to find out is they actually have uh, rolling distribution trucks, like, like uh, food trucks, selling marijuana. So that's an issue. Um, something that really is a concern to me is how easy it is for kids to get medical marijuana cards. And interestingly enough, at our council meeting, uh, I was steadfast. To me, I know how easy it is for kids to get marijuana. What happens is, is that other people, they just, they, they don't have an issue with it because they want the medical marijuana cards. And so the, the other side of this whole equation is when it's easy for adults to get it, it's easy for kids to get it. And so as far as I'm concerned, it's really important that I safeguard the kids. Uh, another just interesting point for everybody to know, the high school in Manhattan Beach was really fascinated, overly so, with the ban on cultivation and distribution of marijuana. That actually bothered me. Fortunately, they asked me my opinion, I gave them my opinion, and they published a full page spread on the cultivation ban. But, but it, it bothered me that they brought so much attention to it, so much interest in it. One of the questions was, it was kind of along the lines of, what's wrong with it? You know, you can kind of read between the lines and the questions. And so if any of you uh, see La Vista, I would encourage you to grab it so you can see what they talked about. One of the things that I said to them was this, um, if you value your brain, and the kids who go to Miracosta do, because they are all high achievers. Understand that your brain is not fully formed until you're 26 years of age. And smoking marijuana has proven to actually change the way your brain patterns evolve. Um, and then I also inform them of things that it does, basically. It affects your ability to concentrate. Oh, I didn't see you there. <laughs> um, it affects your ability to concentrate. It reduces your cognitive abilities. So if you want to be a high achiever in life, don't smoke marijuana at a young age. And so hopefully that got through to them. Um, granted, tonight is about something else. It's about alcohol. But I just wanted you to all know what was going on with marijuana. I don't know how many people realize, but marijuana legalizing is probably going to be on the ballot this fall. Do you all realize that? Um, the guy who started Napster, Sean, whatever his name is, he's been pushing to get it on the ballot. And that's going to be a real issue. So right now, we don't have enough information. I don't really know how it's, been, how it's worded, and, and I don't know if it's really final that it'll be on the ballot. But once we know, and once we have the ballot language, then I'm going to make sure that there's outreach to the community and some way of everybody knowing what this is all about, some of the details associated with it, so everybody can be educated. Because it's going to be very, very important. Things going on in Colorado, I don't think, are being made as public as they should be, in terms of the edibles, and um, just what's happening to kids as they get access to it. So I just wanted to make sure everybody was aware of some of these things that are going on. And uh, I think now it's time to kick everything off. And I really look forward to what's going on tonight. And I'm really glad there's such a great turnout, too. Thank you so much, Mayor Petty. Um, there is such a great part coming up, but there are so many wonderful people in this room that the next woman, she really is my partner in crime, even though we fight crime together. <laughs> and that is Rhonda Frank. She has so many titles in my life, but I'm gonna tell you her official title, and she is um, the Alcohol and Drug Prevention Coordinator for Behavioral Health Services. You'll see it often as BHS and slash NCADD. Um, I was a little afraid when I wanted to bring together the PCC, which is the Prevention Community Council, because her predecessor was a great fighter too. And it was also Mike Ballou. I don't see him here tonight. They're opening a new clinic in Torrance, so busy, busy people. But as soon as Rhonda came on board, let me tell you, I was so happy the change happened. So with that introduction, this wonderful woman who works nonstop at night on weekends, Rhonda Frank.
Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm here just to briefly tell everyone about the Beach Cities Prevention Community Council, because a lot of people are saying, what is that organization? Where did it come from? So um, basically, um, the organization, the Beach Cities Pre Prevention Community Council, which we just call the PCC for short, uh, was formed in 2013. And it came about because we saw a real need to bring together community stakeholders to deal with the issues of alcohol and drug use by our young people. And um, that came about as a result of a survey that um, as the lead organization, um, I work for Behavior Health Services, we did a survey in partnership with the Department of Public Health for LA County, and we found some startling uh, results. Our survey was from 2012. And just to give you a few, we found that 100% of Hermosa Beach youth surveyed indicated that it was somewhat easy or very easy to get alcohol. 65% of Hermosa Beach youth stated they get alcohol at parties. 81% of Manhattan Beach youth stated they get alcohol at parties. And 33% of the youth surveyed said they get alcohol at home which means that one in three youth between the ages of 12 and 17 reported getting alcohol from their own consenting parents. So this is straight from the mouths of the teens, and so we knew we had a problem. And we started out very small, uh, having meetings with Project Touch, Dorothy Forba, uh, David Lowe with the Hospitality Association, and then the South Bay Coalition. So this was a small group of organizations, and now I'm happy to say that we have grown exponentially. And I wanted to recognize the members that are here tonight from the PCC. So we have Clear Recovery Center, uh, Project Touch, as I mentioned, Clara Foundation, South Bay Communities Creating Change, which is a SPA 8 a coalition of prevention agencies, the Beach Cities Health District, the city of Hermosa Beach has been very supportive. Our own Hermosa Beach, uh, Hermosa Beach Police Department has been wonderful. Uh, Freedom for You, the Torrance Lamita Prevention Community Council, Rethinking Access to Marijuana, Thelma McMillan Center. So as you can see, we have a whole host of organizations and individuals uh, like uh, our ABC agent, Mr. Green, is he here? Mr. Mark, Mark Reese, I'm sorry, he's right here. So can we just give everyone from the PCC a big hand? So I know you're waiting to get to our, our film we're gonna debut, so I'll just leave by saying that we really want to encourage all of you to become active in the community. You're welcome to join the PCC. Information about our monthly meetings uh, is in your program. Thank you. Rhonda, thank you so much for that introduction. And I just want to say a second thank you to every single person who is part of the PCC. Um, either if you've come to one meeting or if you've been there with me from the very beginning, I truly appreciate it. And actually, the person who I'm going to introduce to you next is someone whom I saw come into a PCC meeting. And uh, I can sniff out the hard workers really fast. This man, his name is, Jer is Derek, I want to say his last name correctly, Jodzio, correct. And his official title is the Director of Operations at Clear Recovery Center in Redondo Beach. And even though Clear is one of our new partner agencies, I have to say that I've already pushed them up to one of our executive partners of uh, the agencies. Um, Derek and I kind of hit it off very quickly. He's another man who works nonstop. He tells me to put my phone away and go to the beach. And so then when I see him working too much, I say, put your phone away, go to the beach. So with that introduction, I would like to bring up Derek. You know, I'm really excited to be here. I, uh, Clear Recovery Center is pretty new and when I heard about the PCC, I got really excited because the whole mission to educate and prevent is really what we're all about at, at CLEAR. And so, you know, we were sitting around, and I remember, I think it was the Christmas dinner or the Christmas thing where we brought a bunch of food. We're sitting around, and we were kind of throwing out some ideas. I was like, well, what if we did this? What if we, then Rhonda's like, hey, Derek, you want to be part of the committee to plan the town hall? And uh, so I said, okay. And you know, it was my first experience being a part of a committee like that. And we got together, I remember our first meeting, we were at Starbucks and Dorothy I think had purple or blue hair. I can't remember, some, some punk colored hair. And so we're sitting there, we're talking and the idea was that you know, 
the, this reality party, I kept hearing reality party, reality party, and that it was at Dorothy's house and these families met and it went through the whole day and they would meet at like one o'clock and two o'clock and three o'clock and it was really profound. But the issue was that there was a lot of talk about the reality party, but there was no way to see the reality party. And so collectively we came together and we said, what if we were to film a reality party and be able to have a video that could then continue on and be used as an educational piece for all the parents to have, for the schools to have, for the community to have. And uh, we all kind of jumped on, on board with the idea. So I'm really, really excited. Uh, I want to first off thank Rhonda for all of your support and Heather for all of your support and welcoming me in there. But I want to uh, say I'm really excited to present Inside the Party. So I just want to ask that all of the people who we have here that are going to be panel speakers to just remain seated as soon as our technical assistance is ready. We are going to show you what we have titled Inside the Party. Well, as we gear up here, obviously most people who know me in this room know that there is not usually a chance where I won't talk to you about teens or prevention or something. So while they have some technical difficulties, I'll do that. I just want to say that in uh, the filming world, I didn't realize how much work this was going to take. Brett, I know he's working on this. You ready? First time I met Brett, he met at my house. And I thought it was going to be a quick walkthrough with James. James, you back there? The young man in the back that my Weimar Honor Trophy is now secretly in love with and she doesn't like most people, it's kind of weird. Um, they came in and they just were such perfectionists, I thought, oh no, we were gonna be here all night, and we were. But, way to go. Um, I will say that in the director's world, they always say break a leg, but in this film, the only thing that was broken was the coffee table's leg. <laughs> so, all of the teens that you see in this film, they did this all out of what they wanted to talk about to this community. They showed up on a wonderful, beautiful Saturday in Hermosa Beach at approximately four o'clock in the afternoon. And the only thing that they got for staying all night through multiple, multiple, multiple takes is pizza. Yes, pizza. And our director, Brett, was so professional that <laughs> he finally standing up. Brett, would you like to have a second here and talk about your work a little bit? Sure. <laughs> I can talk about you, but you probably are better about sharing. Hi, my name is Brett. I wasn't expecting this at all, but uh, um, yeah, I was just really excited to be a part of this project as well. I mean, uh, I think what it's all about is definitely education. That's the theme of what's going on here is definitely educating the community about um, you know, for me personally, I have personal experience with being a teen that has struggled with addiction and getting back to the other side. So this was a great opportunity, to me, uh, opportunity for me to be able to give back and be a part of something that, you know, with Clear and all the other foundations that are a part of this, the momentum moving forward to just educate our families. I think, you know, there's the saying, um, you know, that goes back in history is knowledge is power. And I think that's where we've got to start is educating people. And, and I think this is a great place to start and everybody getting together and just getting educated. And so I really appreciate um, and hope you guys enjoy um, what we have to offer. Thank you. Ashley, ready? Okay, here we go. Inside the party.
All right, your mother and I will be home Monday night. Okay. All right? We'll call you from the airport. Now listen, we've talked about it a dozen times. If you kids are going to be drinking, just stay home. Do it at home, all right? Have friends over. Be safe. You call us if you need anything. But please yeah. just do not get in the car if you've been drinking. Don't worry. I'll take care of myself. I we're really will. We're okay. counting on you. I know. I know you are, Dad. Okay. Hey, check this out. Rachel's parents are out of town. So that we can invite a couple people over. Heck yeah. That guy, Jake, he's so oh cute. God. Driving you home tonight. Come on. So are you feeling all right? I, I feel so good. Hi, I'm Captain Milton McKinnon from the Hermosa Beach Police Department. You just saw some of the dangers associated with underage drinking. Remember that if you allow or condone underage drinking in your home, there could be severe consequences, not only to your children and their friends, but to you as well. This may be a difficult decision for some, but my simple request is that you be your child's best parent, not their best friend. So that is our inside the party. I apologize that that was a little bit low on the vocals. Um, I actually brought Kleenex, and I see we already have one for both sides. Can pass these back? Um, the reality of what all of my partners, who I absolutely am so proud of, to, that put this together with me, is that we deal with things everything every single day in this affluent community that people just really don't want to believe that happened right here in Hermosa, Manhattan, uh, Redondo, Torrance, Palos Verdes. And we know the truth about what the teens are telling us. So like I told you, all the teens that were in that video, they got nothing from that except pizza. 
and the ability to tell you their story of what their life is here. I see our Manhattan Beach prosecutor who worked with us last year in the front nodding a lot. So with that, um, I promise you that you will not only hear my voice tonight, I am going to be introducing my other partner, <laughs> Debbie. So she's going to be taking over most of the second part of this. Um, Debbie, do you want to just start now? I'm going to pass this over to Debbie. Hi, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Debbie Friedman. I am uh, the evaluator. I've been working in the South Bay community for over 20 years. I've been a grant writer, an evaluator, and uh, bringing uh, both trying to bring funds to the community through um, different programs. I was working with the South Bay Coalition for about 12 or 15 years prior to joining BHS and NCADD. So um, I have a rich, a, a long history in your community, although I don't live here. Um, but it's been my pleasure to see how far this community has come in addressing the alcohol and substance abuse issues around youth and prevention. So. Um, having been here for a long time, it's really, it's fabulous to see this room filled with so many people. So thank you for uh, continuing to include me in this. So tonight I uh, have the uh, pleasure of introducing our panels. We actually will have two expert panels tonight um, to share their thoughts and perspectives on alcohol um, and other drug use amongst our youth and how it's impacting our community. Um, our first panel is comprised of health and law enforcement as experts, and our second panel is here to share their personal stories with substance abuse, um, substance use and abuse. Um, so we have uh, two very different perspectives and very, uh, they'll be very moving. Um, so without further ado, let me introduce our first panel. Each member of the panel will speak. Um, and we'll have each given each uh, time to speak, and then at the end of their panel, we will have time for questions. So if you have some questions and you're thinking of them as they're talking, we're not going to stop them and, and ask in between. If you have a pen and paper or your phone, just jot down your questions so you don't forget. Because <laughs> um, it's um, and then always at the end of the evening, we'll have more time for questions. 